Hello everyone, my name is Carlos Morales. I run AI for Ambic. Let's talk about IoT and what's driving, which wearables is kind of part of IoT, right? What is driving this recent explosion that we're seeing um, in the space? You know, a big part of it, a big limitation in the past that's uh, being addressed by our solution, for example, or and, uh, is the power. So you can always do a lot um, when you sacrifice uh, your battery life. So there was always this, this tension between practicality um, of the solution and how featureful it was. And so technologies like Ambic Spot are, are solving that for you, right? There's also materials, uh, material advances. Um, the Wear conference is primarily about like advanced sensors and novel sensors. When you think about clothing as a sensor, for example, uh, and those material advances plus battery technology and so on are just opening up new fields. Um, hand in hand with that, uh, we're getting computational advances. So uh, what used to take a whole desktop now fits on, on something uh, that's basically a, smaller than a, than a fingernail clipping. It's just insane. Um, and it, you know, sits power at the same time. And then finally, what I would call algorithmic advances, which are, uh, AI and uh, AI like techniques like analytics at the, at the endpoint before, uh, the last few years that was just completely impractical and, and impossible to do. Now you can get away with really sophisticated, um, algorithms running at the edge. And there's really good reasons for, for that. Um, so, so what pops out of that is this Cambrian explosion. It's like hundreds, if not thousands of solutions popping up uh, that take advantage of these trends and, and start producing small, ubiquitous, uh, a, a phrase I've heard at the ambit, uh, at the wear conference was dis disappearables, the uh, com computation that disappears into your life, um, and valuable. So you, you bring all this together and what you're doing is you're making uh, your end user's life a little bit more joyful, right? And that's why we're here. I mean, we're here to make money, right? All, all businesses are. But as engineers and as uh, developers, you like, uh, it's important to remember that we're making things that make our end users' lives better. Um, and when you make your end user's life better, they pay you, which is great because there's a lot of money out there. Um, McKinsey thinks that the endpoint market um, is somewhere between five and 12 trillion. You know, analysts are often wrong, but even if they're off by a factor of two, there's still trillions of dollars out there to, to be had. And that market includes things uh, such as well understood like products such as smart bands, smart watches. We know that there's huge hearables, like things that go in your ear or over ears, huge. Um, but you start doing other things like just ubiquitous preventive maintenance. It's super easy now to just kind of plop a, a device on your engine, on your uh, tractor, on, on your what, whatever it is that you need to uh, Keep an eye on your on your transformers, and use AI to, to alert you when something is going wrong. Uh, it's just everywhere, right? And uh, you know the the possibilities here opened up by sensors, power advances, and algorithmic advances are huge. This is my personal view uh, about what AI is for for the endpoint market. It's not AI is not the future. It never has been. AI is here to enable cool features, just make things that are already there a little bit better. Um, for example, without AI or advanced analytics, you can use your 3D accelerometer to figure out whether you're walking or not to a certain degree of accuracy. Um, and if you remember the, the step counter wars, everybody was off by like a thousand. It's like a 10% error. No one, that's just terrible. So, uh, especially if you care about counting steps. With AI, you can get a lot more discriminant. You can actually start teasing apart from that same sensor, whether you're stepping, running, what's your gait like? Uh, you can take into account multiple gates if you have uh, gait variations. 
are you uh, riding a bicycle? Or are you riding a stationary bicycle? Is it an elliptical? You start getting into a lot of fine detail. Um, and that, that can only happen with sophisticated algorithms such as AI. So in, in this case, what you're doing is you're making your life for your end user joyful, happier. The, the fact that I don't have to tell my watch that I'm on an elliptical, it just says, hey, I notice you're on an elliptical. That may seem normal nowadays, but that is really sophisticated uh, behavior. Likewise, uh, and this is not so much for, for a wearable, but it is a really good application of AI. You can do things with just math, like by cubic interpolation, very simple to compute. Um, and the reason you need this is because you're taking a, like HD images, which is what most people recorded, uh, most studios and, and uh, uh, like movie producers and streaming services have maybe 4K, mostly uh, just HD. And they need to, to, to sell 8K TVs now. So how do, you, how do you get this back catalog of lower resolution video uh, to, to look well on your TV, look like reasonably you know, sharp on your TV? Um, the old way, by cubic interpolation, super easy. Um, I, an intern could do that. The new way, using something called uh, GANs, the AI is actually looking at, oh, this looks like a line. I will actually turn that into a line and interpolate the, the line between two pixels. So this is an actual snapshot from, from a snippet of a anime video. And you can see that the, the AI approach is doing a much better job of making it look good. And why do we do it? To sell AK TVs? Sure. But also to make things more joyful for our end users.